Hey, welcome back to another video. And I realized in my day 27 video, I didn't do a very good job at explaining how to get to the plugins being registered with on one photo raw or recognized by on one photo raw. So I wanted to take today's 27.5 video. That's what we'll call it to kind of relook that. So that way everyone can, you know, kind of catch up to where that workflow really does fit in. So let's go ahead and jump inside of the computer and take a look at these settings in on one. Here we are inside of on one. And if I just go ahead and click on file or actually come over here to on one photo raw 2025, we want to get to our preferences window. All right. The reason we need to be in the preferences window is because the third tab is the plugins tab. And this is where we tell on one what we want it to do whenever it's being activated as a plugin. So if you have the max version of on one photo raw, like I do, then you can activate this as a plugin in programs like Lightroom and Photoshop, affinity photo, things of that sort. But what we care about is using third party plugins that work in Photoshop inside of on one photo raw. Now, if you're not familiar with using plugins, then don't worry about it. I'll do my best to kind of break that down. But if you are, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. So essentially what on one allows us to do is to establish a folder with all of the plugins that we have installed on our computer. So that's actually a very important point that I need to make is you won't be able to do anything with these plugins until they are installed on your computer. On one does not install them for you. So you'll have to make a separate purchase and install them. And then once they are installed, you can tell on one where that plugin file is located on your computer. And I'll talk about that here in a second. And then what happens is on one reads that file and then it triggers the plugin to activate. That's essentially all that happens in this rendering of the plugin. The section of the plugin tab that we care about is all the way down here at the bottom where it says third party plugins, right? That's anything that's not on one and no, you can't activate affinity photo. So for those of you who are wondering, can you activate affinity photo as a plugin inside of on one? The answer to that is no, unfortunately, uh, with that being said, you have two options here. You have open default folder, which by default on one will target a Photoshop CC folder. So if you have Photoshop installed on your computer, all your plugins are likely going to install there. So when you start going through your installers, it'll say, do you want to add this to your Photoshop CC folder? That's a very standard practice. So if you have Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom installed on your computer, this is going to be very straightforward and simple for you. Now, let's say you don't have Photoshop installed on your computer and you need to point on one to a secondary folder. Well, that's where this little radial bubble that's checked here that says secondary plugin folder. You can check that and then you click choose. And what it's going to do is open up your finder or your explorer. And then you can go to a folder that has all of your plugins in it. Now, every plugin installs a little bit differently, so I can't cover the technicalities of each plugin here on this video. But if you do a little bit of research and if you ask me down in the comment section below and it's something that I can answer, I will be more than happy to help explain kind of where that plugin file may be. But my recommendation would be to pay attention during your installation of the third party software to see where it is being stored. And you want to find, I mean, in some cases, they're very straightforward, right? It'll say uh, dot plugin. Uh, but in other cases, you get these um, other looking files, which it looks like I have a bunch of dot plugins on my computer. So, uh, I don't have that issue, but you know what? We'll go take a look at DXO. So the Nick collection, it actually gives a bunch of configure tools alongside the plugin files. All right. So that's way more technical than I think 
I can even explain here in this video uh, because I understand it, you know, to a extent. But the point here is wherever your files are being stored on your computer, that's where you want to point this secondary folder to so on one can read it. Once that's done, you can hit OK and then you'll likely need to restart on one so it can pull in that file directory. For those of you who are on an M1 Mac and you are using Luminar Neo, here's what you want to do to make sure that it's going to work properly. And this is going to be uh, hit or miss if you're, or I say M1, I really mean Apple Silicon, um, but I'm on an M1 Mac mini. What you want to do is come to the folder. So I'm in my applications folder, and then I just opened up on one here. I want to right click on on one and then I want to click on get info. You could also do command and I that gives you the exact same screen that we have right here. Once this is open, it's usually going to say open using Rosetta or maybe it's going to say uh, or, or I'm sorry, there may or may not be a check mark in this box that says open using Rosetta. My recommendation, at least in all of my testing, in order to get Luminar Neo to work, I have to uncheck open using Rosetta. All right. Again, this is only an issue for those who are using silicon computers or Apple silicon computers. You know who you are if you're using those. If you're on Windows, you may not even have this problem. Um, in fact, I'd be curious to know if Luminar Neo is working on a Windows based machine. Unfortunately, I just don't have one to test it on, so I can't confirm or deny. So if you are using Windows, let us know in the comment section below um, if Luminar Neo does work. All right as a plug into on one for raw. So now with all of that technicality out of the way, we are ready to go. And this is where the workflow really begins, right? So all the prep has been done and I have a file open here so I can click on layer, hover over filters, and I now have access to all of my plugins. But there is actually one other step that I need to cover before we move forward. So I'm just gonna activate Luminar Neo as a standalone. And the reason I'm doing this is you may or may not have the updated Photoshop plugin installed. And, you know, if you don't have Photoshop, then you probably wouldn't even think anything of it. Um, but you definitely need to have the Photoshop plugin installed. So I want to show you how to do that. Once you have it open, you'll come up to the top left next to the Luminar Neo logo here. You'll click the little drop down. I guess that's their old logo for Luminar Neo. They have a new one now. Uh, and then you'll click on install plugins. All right. That's going to bring you to this little window here. As you can see, I've already activated this for Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom because it says uninstall and I have a check mark next to each of these icons. If you don't have a check mark next to the Photoshop icon, you don't have to worry so much about Lightroom Classic, unless of course you're using Lightroom, in which case you may want to install it. But Adobe Photoshop is the one that we need in order for this to work properly with On1, right? So that's something that's specific to Luminar Neo um, that may not be a thing for other software but just make sure that you have the latest plugins installed for Luminar Neo because that does matter. All right, once that's done, you can come up here to layer, hover over filters. You already see me use Boris effects in the previous video, so I'm not gonna do that today. I'm just gonna come down to Skyloom and click on Luminar Neo. And Luminar Neo is going to activate. You can see it says plugin started, and that's the good sign. So or that is a good sign. Uh, and then you can come in, make all the edits that you want to. So we'll just click on objects here. And I'm just gonna add a random preset. So that way it'll just work. I'm gonna go with surface tension. I have no idea what this is gonna look like on the image, but once it does render, I'm going to click apply. All right, perfect. I'm gonna hit apply. And then this is gonna send it back into On One Photo Raw. Again, as a new layer, very similar or exactly the same, I should say, as yesterday's video or the day 27 video, uh, depending on when you're watching this. But I now have that back. So if I turn this off, turn it on, you can see it's all working just fine. Now, 
Before we end this video, I do want to jump over to the internet. So give me a second to pull that up. All right. So what we're looking at, and this link is in the description box below. Uh, what we're looking at is the hosting of Photoshop plugins inside of on one photo raw. All right. Uh, because not every plugin that you can use inside of Photoshop will work inside of on one. So before you go out and purchase plugins or anything of the sort, I recommend you do two things. One, consult with this document here to see if it's even going to work with on one photo raw. And then two, I want you to download a trial version of that plugin to see if it's going to work and how well it's going to work on your machine. All right. Those are the two things that I recommend that you do in order to make sure that you're going to get the best response with that software. Uh, but with that being said, let me kind of walk you through how to read this if, you know, it's a little confusing. So uh, obviously over here on the left side, you have the company of the software that, you know, pretty straightforward. The name of the software or the program, if you're not familiar with DxO, uh, a lot of these are the Nick Collection plugins with silver effects being one of the more popular ones. And mind you, this is using silver effects three. I can affirm or confirm, I should say, that Silver FX 8, I think that's what we're on from the Nick Collection 8 for sure. It does work with On One Photo Raw. So don't worry so much about these numbers here. Uh, just pay attention to the company name and the name of the software. Uh, it, it does work. Now, x86 support if i'm not mistaken these are on a windows machine i'm not entirely certain you know how that all works out so if you have a good summary of x86 support and you want to leave that down in the comment section please do so for anyone who's on a windows based machine uh, for me and anyone else who's in the apple silicon family then you'll look over here where it says Mac M1 and then where it says yes, that means that the meth yes or no just means does it work? All right. That's all that this is really saying in process means that it's going to work using the non Rosetta. All right. Um, and that's that check mark that I showed you back here. So if I hit command and I. So it's saying uh, right now I have on one photo raw running without using the Rosetta emulator. But if I were to check this, then it would use the Rosetta emulator. All right. So when you see this over here where it says notes, photo, photo raw must be run in Rosetta two. That's telling you that it will work, but you have to check that box. And we're going to go take a look at analog effects and see what error we get when I run that. Um, by the way, if you want to pick up DXO, Nick collection and, you know, test it out for yourself. There'll be a link down in the description box below. And if you decide to purchase it, I do have an affiliate coupon, save you a little bit of money. I do make a commission off of that, but it's at no extra charge to you. Um, so just food for thought, but nonetheless, we'll, we'll definitely test that out. So that's kind of how to read across here. All right. So my recommendation is to just scroll down until you find a software that you're interested in. So maybe you're interested in Topaz uh, and this works for all of these. Topaz used to be sold as individual plugins and I think they still might sell them as individuals, but most people have photo AI now. I know that that's the one that I have and it works perfectly fine. Um, even though this says Gigapixel AI didn't work, don't worry about that. Uh, Topaz Photo AI does work. And that brings me to the reason why I was saying you should just download trials of the software and then test it out with on one to see if it's actually going to work. That's like the most assured method of confirming that something's going to work for you. All right. Now, uh, we can come down a little bit further and we get to Skyloom. All right. And it says, yes, it works. And it's an out of process, uh, method. Don't worry so much about that. I already showed you how to make it work. You just uncheck that use open in Rosetta. If you're on a, uh, Mac with using Apple Silicon. Um, and, and if you're using an Intel based Mac, then, you know, you shouldn't have that issue at all. But, 
with all that being said, it does say plugin is not color managed properly, reduces saturation. So keep that in mind when you are working inside of Skyloom, Luminar Neo, and on one, you're going to get some interesting colors. Now, let me see if we jump back into on one. You can see, you know, I used a preset that did alter the colors. I'm not disappointed with the colors that I got here. I think that they came back looking pretty decent, but uh, that could be an issue depending on what you're trying to do. So just pay attention to that. Be cognizant of it. And again, try download a trial and test it out. I also have an affiliate link and coupon code down in the description box for Luminar Neo as well. So you can definitely check that out if that's something you're interested in. Go and take a look at this uh, this article. And down here at the bottom, it talks about how you need to uh, get to these directories. All right. I've already covered this in the video, but you can also look at it here in writing from the on one people that are telling you how they want you to use their software. And, you know, if you don't have Photoshop, boom, it's right here. And it talks you through the whole process of setting up a plugin file and then when I was speaking earlier about while you're installing your software, pay attention to what your software allows you to install plugins for. And, you know, this is something that will walk you through. So I think if you're interested in using plugins, this is a invaluable resource for establishing plugins with all one photo raw. And it's a absolute must read or at least browse. So. Again, that's in the description box below, along with a plethora of coupon codes and affiliate links to help you get some amazing software at lower prices. If you got questions, you know what to do. Leave them in the comment section below. I will do my absolute best to answer them. I can't guarantee that I know it all because I'm just a guy. I don't know everything, um, but I will help you figure it out if it's something that I can help with. And until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.